Last two years, we saw the greatest wealth transfer in human history from the poor to the rich. And now the rich are admitting that maybe all the things that they did over the last two years were not necessary, but they don't give the money back, the property back. You see the great reset, Davos, this year I was going to go out of disgust. I'm just not going to do it anymore. You know, because what are they doing? They're saying you'll own nothing and be happy. All the farmland is going to be owned by the rich people and the big companies, multinational companies, international funds. All of the supply chains run by a small group of hyper-consolidated entities that are transnational. Don't give a fuck about the little person. The retail side. On Tuesday, Bitcoin fell briefly below $28,000 for the first time in many months, while cryptocurrencies overall have lost more than a trillion dollars in market value in the past month, according to data site CoinMarketCap, as investors fret about tightening monetary policy. Cryptocurrencies fell the stocks after the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported consumer prices for the month of April jumped 8.3%, which was slightly higher than expected by economists polled by Dow Jones. That spooked investors, leading them to exit risk assets including crypto. Cryptocurrencies remain highly correlated with the S&P 500 and more recently, the Nasdaq Composite. The crypto market has been under pressure for some time, now the Fed keeps hiking. So equities keep going down and crypto has been going down along with it. Generally, that's created a lot of fear in the market. This is the second time in a week Bitcoin has fallen into the 29,000 range. Analysts have called $30,000 a key level for the largest cryptocurrency by market cap and said it could fall even further if it can't hold there. Charles Hoskinson has reacted to the crash and wants you to wake up. In a Twitter broadcast on Tuesday night, the Cardano founder and Ethereum co-founder warned of a dystopian future brought on by hyperinflation and governments just printing money. The CEO and co-founder of Cardano published a YouTube video on his Twitter page recently titled A Few Musings. Hoskinson starts off by delivering somewhat of a reality check on the current state of the global money system and says that the world economy is not healthy. The world economy, Hoskinson warned, is not healthy. And the ongoing crypto crash where total market cap has plummeted more than 10% in the past 24 hours according to CoinMarketCap has shined a light on the divide between institutional investors and retail investors the latter of whom, in Hoskinson's view, are using crypto to try to opt out of a global system that's unfair. Charles Hoskinson shares a lot of brilliant insight and his video has inspired a lot of crypto faithful to hold the line and keep the faith as indicated by many comments in his video. We enjoin all our viewers to watch this video and get some motivation from what he said in the video. This is a difficult time for all crypto investors but a smash on the like button will definitely be a very nice gift for the savvy finance team and that can possibly make our day here. Just wanted to make a video about some musings of the recent events of the markets and the industry. Uh, you know, I've been in this space for almost a decade now, and I remember Bitcoin before it was a dollar, and then going up to thirty, then down to four, then to two fifty, then to eighty, then to twelve hundred, then down to two fifty again. Uh, then uh, up to 20,000, then down to 4,000, then the 64,000, and now we're in the 30s. And I remember all the events, the collapse of Silk Road, the collapse of Mt. Gox, um, all the various interesting ventures throughout the years like MasterCoin and Color Coins and a litany of other things and concerns. Uh, and no matter where I go, what I do, it's, it always amazes me that there's this constant rhyming of the attitude. So the old guards, nothing phases us anymore. You know, we've seen everything twice just to make sure we didn't miss anything. The new people, the minute that something occurs, uh, like for example, the collapse of a stable coin or the collapse of BitConnect or these types of things, uh, then they say, oh my God, this is the end of crypto. Everything is over. Oh, we're all going to die. The markets are over. The dream is gone. You know, what's happening right now is there's over $300 trillion of institutional money floating around the world looking for a home. The last 20 years in particular, there's been a hyper acceleration in the printing of money. This is what Ron Paul was talking about, all the Austrians were talking about, and nobody really listened to them. America went from $4.5 trillion in the national debt, a surplus, to over $30 trillion, and the prospect of a 3% interest rate meaning it costs you a trillion dollars a year just to service your debt. This is not healthy. The world economy is not healthy. And there's now the biggest division ever 
between the retail investor and the institutional investor. The institutional investor, uh, they have basically a mandate to go and push somehow, some way with their trillions of dollars under management, 10, 15% returns. Now, 10, 15% returns on top of inflation of 20%. They're doing all kinds of monkey business and shenanigans. Why is it your homes are getting so expensive? Well, because the Black Rocks of the world and the massive private funds of the world are going and buying regular everyday three-bedroom, two-bath homes through big aggregators. And you wake up and you see a $250,000 home become half a million dollars, $750,000. Can you afford it? No, because wages don't track with that. It's a good investment for them. It's a good hedge at the moment for inflation, but it's not permanent. Last two years, we saw the greatest wealth transfer in human history from the poor to the rich. And now the rich are admitting that maybe all the things that they did over the last two years were not necessary, but they don't give the money back, the property back. You see the great reset, Davos, this year I was going to go out of disgust. I'm just not going to do it anymore. You know, because what are they doing? They're saying you'll own nothing and be happy. All the farmland is going to be owned by the rich people and the big companies, multinational companies, international funds. All of the supply chains run by a small group of hyper-consolidated entities that are transnational. Don't give a fuck about the little person. The retail side, people are opting out. Problem is there's less money on the retail side now than on the institutional side. If you look at the selling rates of crypto, what's happened over the last six months is institutions have been dumping their crypto. Some, like Sailor and others, are holding on and doing everything in their power to go team orange. But most are looking at it as a high risk, high return asset. And in times of recession, reallocate your portfolio. This was always the danger of inviting the Wall Street types in, is that they would just simply treat crypto like any other asset and label it as an exotic high risk one. And when the markets go in not the direction they want, they dump it. The retail people are holding because they are opting out of a global system uh, that's unfair, a global system that's frankly rigged. I've seen it myself. I've been in the meetings. I've talked to the people everywhere I go. They don't give a fuck about sustainability. They don't care at all in any way, shape, or form about whether you live well your standard of living is the same as the standard of living of your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents. In fact, quite the opposite. They're trying to prepare the masses to accept a standard of living significantly less than the one that they inherited, the one that they grew up with, the one that their parents grew up with. This is no way to run the world. This is no way to, to live well. It's because they broke the world money system. And the entire point of cryptocurrencies are to restore some trust, credibility, and stability into the world money system. That's the entire point of the labors of this industry, the research that we do, the reason why we keep picking up shovels and fighting the good fight. Now, there's tons of experiments. Maybe fractional reserve things are not a good idea. Go figure. We've learned this again and again and again from private monies in the 19th century and again and again and again from our banking system. And now the market is again learning the same lessons of before. Only this time is pushed by the arrogance of youth as opposed to by a malicious cabal. Maybe it's a good idea to follow deflationary monetary policy, full or over reserve, if one's desire is to create stability. Now, on our part as an ecosystem, and as a community of developers, a community of people building things, uh, we've focused on first principles. Never filed a patent, never pursued intellectual property, uh, never in any way, shape, or form restricted the youth of things or asserted that one or a few should have a control over the many. These are basic principles that we've kept with us since 2015 when the initial parts of the Cardano project were created. And every single day, what's so frustrating to me is we get stronger, yet the markets, because of institutional manipulation, 
amongst other factors, grow weaker. And it's a time for choosing. The institutional people have already chosen their fate. They're playing musical chairs with a global economy which will collapse. It cannot sustain itself. If something like a conflict, a war, can break the globe, if people use the convenient boogeyman of the week to excuse inflation or recession when they cannot possibly be intellectually honest that printing trillions of dollars every year out of thin air is not going to have ramifications and consequences. If the warfare state needs to increase and continue, empire needs to increase and continue for all of our standards to be the same. Meanwhile, our environment is being devastated. Meanwhile, standards of living are going down, despite the fact that technology, social progress, and education are improving. Never has there been a time in human history where we have gained so much from the labors of those who came before us, yet our systems are so inadequate to harness what we've gained. And never has there been a time in human history where we have been so blind to the long-term consequences of what we're doing. We're due for a systems change and the institutions aren't gonna do that for us. They're gonna go down with the sinking ship because they simply have no other choice. The point of cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology has always been a different option than the dystopian future that's being offered to us where we own nothing and we'll be happy. What do you make of Charles Hoskinson musing? Now that Bitcoin has broken the 30K support level and currently trading at $26,215 as at the time of writing the script for this video, we are concerned that Bitcoin might go down as low as $20,000 as predicted by Gareth Soloway. However, we believe that the crypto market, especially strong assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and others will bounce back stronger. There is so much institutional money looking for a home that will eventually fall into the crypto markets. Here at Savvy Finance, we have sold nothing but has rather been stacking up more coins into our portfolio. Hold the line, hurdle hard and don't sell that crypto, especially when you are already at a loss. The market will bounce back. Bitcoin always bounce back. Thanks for watching. Keep hodling and stay savvy.